All right, Lights, Camera, Barstool, movie and TV news time. I'm your host, Jeff D'Lo, alongside Ken Jack and Gooch. I'm in Chicago, different vibe. Ken Jack in, in Germany for these news and notes here as we are in the midway point of September, Monday, September 18th. Big time trailer news. <laughs> trailer for Aquaman 2 finally released less than 100 days until the movie comes out from a studio that has had multiple comic book movies bomb in one year. They took a property that made a billion dollars the first time. They said, hey, let's make sure we market this as little as possible. Now, it's worth noting. It's worth noting that apparently the test screenings were atrocious. Like Very atrociously. Bad. Like Walkout, even, Say it again. Walkouts. Remember what they said in the yes, first Yes, people one? leaving, which I didn't even know you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, do, you just you. Raise, do you raise your hand? <laughs> like, do you go, yeah. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah, like I didn't yeah, know exactly. that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be funny if there were no walkouts. Just like it's just like a couple people had to go to the bathroom and they just shit for the rest of the movie. Like they're just like, yeah. damn it. Um, it, so that is worth noting. Like that could be a reason they didn't want to promote it because it apparently is so terrible. We've been doing this podcast for uh, six years now, over six years of this month. It, that was the worst test screening news we've seen like hands down that like you see some screening news where it's like oh not very good they got to fix it this was i think easily the worst like like not even yeah. like oh a couple things about like people like you said like kendrick said people walked out but trailer comes out uh, aquaman in the lost kingdom which without knowing the plot i'm gonna just take a stab at it that he has to find the lost kingdom in order to take down black manta played by yaha abdul mateen who i am excited to see that him back as that character uh amber heard potentially back in this movie a little bit a tough question to tell. Here. she's barely in the trailer uh patrick wilson back uh looks like you know he is the brother who has to get broken out of jail uh, here's the official synopsis uh, of the movie aquaman is forced to protect atlantis from devastation after an incident uh, after an ancient power is unleashed by Black Manta obtaining the Black Trident. Uh, trailer has a definitely uh, a very clear mix of vibes and tones, which makes me believe. Directed by James Wan again, but you can kind of tell where I'm sure it goes wrong. Poo-poo and pee-pee. Mm. <laughs> oh, they're going to laugh out of you. Like, huh? you can, like, like, right, like, you can tell... I think where this movie may be bad. I think solely based on the trailer. Like it's, there's some pretty jokey, stupid things, and there's some really serious, like, wow, I think they all die here things. Yeah. That was a, well, when you watch that trailer, you kind of do get the feeling that like everything is true about what you hear from the test screen. Cause it does look like kind of a mishmash. And like, to be fair, to, to a certain point, the first Aquaman was that it was a lot of CGI, a lot of like big, massive set pieces, um, that were like done in a fully green screen, whatever. Uh, and that kind of was kind of cool at points, especially towards the third act of Aquaman, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but this one, just looking at it, I don't know why I, why I would want to see this movie. You know what I mean? The death Again, we're in the death rattle of DC. I don't know what about this movie makes me want to go like, hey, I got to go fucking check. If I was a regular movie goer, if I was like, wow, man, I got to go fucking check out Aquaman too. And like, they, again, we're clue, we're keyed in. We know all this stuff about test screens, all this stuff. But for the average dude, I just don't know what the draw is anymore other than just like, hey, Jason Momoa and the dude from Insidious are teaming up to take down Black Manta. Like, I, I don't fucking know. I just don't get it. I mean, Dolph Lundgren. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Dolph Lundgren. He's there. Was that even Dolph Lundgren in the flashback? I think that was Vincent Reagan, who we just saw in uh, One Piece in that flashback sequence. <laughs> oh, no. It's the – yeah, no, that's Dolph, that's, which is very random. Um, but, yeah, like you're saying, it's just – I think this speaks to just comic book or yeah, comic book movies, like where they're at right now. Like if you want to make something that gets people to theaters in that genre, you have got to start like branching out and doing something different. This just looks like a comic, uh, comic book movie that came out in 2010, 2011. It just looks bland as hell with bad CGI. Do something different. Like I remember when the first Aquaman came out, there was a lot of discussion about a trench movie where James Wan would do like a horror yeah. down in the trench right. from that first scene, which I think that would have been great. That's more interesting mm -hmm. for the viewers, for really everyone involved, but they just went back to the well and they're doing – looks like more of the same. And you're right, Ken Jack. Like why would you want to go see this unless you had an investment in the franchise or you have to review this movie on a podcast? Like mm -hmm. where where is the motivation here? I don't know. Jason Momoa's charisma can only get you so far. It has like 
it just hits so many sequel beats with the trailer, which I'm not just saying this is DC, it's Marvel, it's any of them. It's where, like, at this point, you got to, it's like, it's like, I've been doing, you know, I've been farting around since the last movie. That's like the opening <laughs> yeah. vibe. Then it's like, oh, guy from my past who you may not have liked in the last movie teaming up with me. And here comes yep. Death Man to kill it. It's, it's the same. It's the same thing, which is like, again, that's that was fine a while ago. And some still do it. So I marvel this too. But like, it is to a point where, ah, like, this was such a disaster with test screenings. And they're releasing trailer less than 100 days out. Like, like hindsight 2020, but probably should have done something different, especially after a billion dollar movie. Yeah. Didn't this recently happen to, was it um, Thor Love and Thunder that this happened? Like they didn't release anything for it, like up until like 70 days or something before it came out. Yeah, Thor. Yeah. Sorry. I think Thor's time. Solo is a very famous one. Solo didn't release yeah. a trailer till the Super Bowl. And the movie came out in May, um, yeah. which was just insane at that point. That was a wild decision. But the test screen thing, obviously, totally different because that didn't happen for either of those other two movies. But everything we know about this movie, it's just like, how is this going to work? How? And it's obviously not. I don't see any universe where this hits the one billion dollar sort of threshold <laughs> that that first one comes to. But like, how does this become? Because this is the last. This is the last one, right? This is the very last bit for DC. Who so, knows? <laughs> I feel like every time we so say, like, "Oh, yeah, this is like the end of the old shit," right? I feel like every time we say that, there's like, "Oh yeah, we forgot about Morpho Blorpo and the Seven yeah, 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 yeah. The Tron or something," and like that's just how it works. But the I feel like this is so weird for this to be the last one, you know? Yeah, it's like like. Sorry, quick water sip there. It's He's like they're going to say, like, all right, now it's the start of James Gunn's DCEU in yeah. March of 2024. But the old DCEU is going to end in March of 2025 with Shazam 3. Like, that's what it feels like. You're like, right. It's like, yeah. oh, man, just like we got it. You, there is no clear, clean break with this. And I think that is a that is like all jokes aside, that is a huge issue. Like, it's a massive issue. Just a post credit. Yes. Like, none of these people will return. That that that's just, yeah. just a clear cut break, like hard stuff. Yeah, they're all dead. Yeah, they're yeah. all done. It's just yeah, over. It's over. James Gunn just needs to take out like a like a front page ad in like every newspaper in the world and just be like, all these heroes, yeah, they're all dead. We're doing a new thing. <laughs> just make it clear to everyone. Because they were that was like the thing with Flash, right? They were like, Flash is going to reset everything, which it doesn't. It, it, a lot it, of it does Flash. reset a little bit at the end, but like it not to like the, oh, the climactic big event that we were teased that would happen. Now, obviously, there's some reasons at play there that they may have oh. dialed it back, but yeah, crazy. I just crazy. remembered that that there's a that Flash post credit scene where he just what does he do? He picks up Arthur at a bar, drunk, like didn't watch. It? Yeah, yeah, just so, so mm-hmm. dumb. Also, Mira, uh, 100 like dying in the first five minutes. Amber oh, Heard, yeah. sure. They're going to get Amber Heard out of this fucking movie so fast. Yeah. No, they she want to in the opening montage. It, it, it might be like a Hall and Oates <laughs> song. And he's like, because in the trailer, he's like, I got a job. And he's like, I got a job. Also, Mira died. It's like, that's yeah. what it's going to be just to get rid of her. Gungan um, AIDS, from what I heard. Other, other comic book news, just really quickly. Loki is now going to be a primetime release, just like Ahsoka is. Uh, so nine Eastern, six Pacific on Thursday on uh, Thursday nights will be Loki, Great. which uh, <clears throat> very good move. I'm excited for that. A hey, tinfoil uh, hat, tinfoil hat, Jeff. I think that this is because they want the ratings to go up while the writers on strike. Probably. <laughs> I saw something today that ABC is going to lean heavier into Monday Night Football now with the writer strike. So um, I believe it. I think it's a good move. I, I think that the buzz and discussion about Ahsoka, I wonder if it's oh, helped yeah. it. But you've seen the buzz and discussion around Ahsoka. Um, so, yeah, yeah, we'll see if it's a move. It should have been this way the uh, whole time. Why are we ever doing it any other I way? I, I agree completely. Uh, and I hope I hope Netflix tries to do the same whenever they drop the next Stranger Things. I hope like everyone does this. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Winning time. Speaking of things not happening, though, uh, winning time uh, from HBO, the Lakers show, which a lot of people loved. I kind of fell off on it. I didn't love this show, but with that said, it doesn't. Like, I'm not applauding the canceling of it. Like it's a bummer. It sucks. A lot of people love the show, and when you have something like this, that's that's that out there and different, and it's not made my favorite Adam McKay work in terms of production, but. Like, it's a bummer to see it go, and it's surprising to see it go with HBO. Obviously, a lot of things at play right now, which I'm sure played an effect, but they were begging for a season three, and they are like, help us get a season three, got to get the ratings up, but it just never really hit. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. I was uh, really into the first season. Something about the second season, I think like two episodes in, we were just talking about the soft pod. Um, I think like two episodes in, I just kind of like faded away on it. And I was just like, <clears throat> I, I'm interested. I like the actors involved. I really like what they did in that first season. Like obviously Adrian Brody was, was specifically like really hitting it off. Um, but I just kind of like faded out and I don't know what it is. I can't explain it why. Cause like it usually doesn't happen with a good TV show, but yeah, it sucks. Um, obviously people did really love it a lot. Those people were Lakers fans. So who gives a shit? I'm a hardcore ba- basketball guy. I'm a Suns guy. I fucking hate the Lakers, dude. Like you would not believe. Fuck those guys. <laughs> he knows ball. You're a ball guy. Wow. You're a ball knower. Wow. I know. Um, yeah, I think I'm the de facto winning time guy at this point on the pod. Um, I, I don't love the show, but there's a lot I do love about it. There's nothing else like it on TV, and it hasn't been for – I can't remember. I mean, it shot better in terms of like the actual like sports side of it than any other sports TV show I can think of. And it has some really cool style to it. Um, you could tell this season they had some thoughts about whether or not it was going to be canceled. The writing fell off a little bit. It was definitely jumbled. They're speeding through some storylines and dragging others out. This last episode, though, the way they canceled it is like one of the one of the wilder things I've ever <clears throat> seen on on TV, especially coming from HBO. And this is just like more of like Warner Brothers. What the fuck is going on at your offices right now? Because they set up in the finale like three different storylines that are going to like play out over the next season or I guess the end of the the show because they ended on episode seven. I didn't even know. I think it was supposed to be 10 episodes. Ended on episode seven, whatever, with Boston winning, which is kind of hilarious. Um, and then they run this Disney montage at the end of the episode. Like one of those, this is what this person ended up doing. This is what this person ended up doing with like text over like still images from the show. It was so bizarre. And then the episode ended and I just got on Twitter and of course announcement went out right at 10 PM right after the episode got done airing. Yeah, this is canceled. So just insane. Um, I've really never seen anything like that. It's weird. I wonder if they like to do that. Cause I would have just said no. If they were like, yeah, insert an ending montage into your show. I'd be like, fuck you. Go like make, go look it up. If you were like, you know what I mean? It was 100% put together like last week. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Like, if, but if they ask them, like, their EPs or whatever, like, or, or creative director of the show, and they're like, yeah, we want you to, the show's over, so please add something in for more finality. I would just been like, like, literally, fuck you. No. Like, why would I do that? Yeah, exactly. It, it sucks. I, I would have loved it, to see them also, like, take it in, like, to, I think the show right. had potential to branch out from the Lakers and do other, like, do, do Jordan's rookie season, maybe do, like, the Cowboys in the 90s. Right. You could do other cool sports stuff. There's a lot of options. Like, again, I don't want to pretend I cape for this show, and I was very excited for it. <clears throat> I still wish um, – what's the say? would have played Larry Bird. Um, oh, Bo, Bo Burnham. Burnham. Bo Burnham. But I, I, they did a really – like, the production value, the quality show was fantastic, and it was funny at times. And I think the fourth wall stuff got to be a bit much for people, especially maybe if you're just like a cat. Like, you got to love that style from uh, from Adam McKay and this type of stuff that he does. Um, I just never became a huge fan of it. But with that said, like, it doesn't change my opinion. The fact that it it sucks ass that it got that it got canceled. That's because yeah. a lot of people seem to like it, and unfortunately, that's just like the rub with television. Still, is that a lot of these shows, even though maybe they don't have a ton of audience, like they're just fucking below. I mean, it's the it's the never ending Arrested Development thing, right? It just just it's a bummer. Uh, so yeah, Winning Time uh, canned uh, will not have a third season. Speaking of streaming things or tv things this is a tv thing to a movie thing lando the lando star wars series starring uh donald glover as lando calrissian apparently now a film not a series of of shows which is i don't know i don't know i have i don't know if i have a strong opinion on this yet but that is interesting that they're changing it because it was for a while a series i think i'm kind of leaning on i wish it was a series i still want a like I would still love a a you know scoundrel uh, you know dirty you know kind of underworld like you know trade and spy a spice runner type Star Wars series where it's like no big connective tissue to Star Wars just like we know what well, we know where Lando ends up in Empire you know we know where Han ends up we know when he dies like just show us their side quest show us their early missions like that's what I'd like and I don't know if a movie suits that very well well yeah. kind of slow solo it kind of doesn't. <laughs> 
the, I, uh, I, that sort of character, <laughs> the criminal sort of scoundrel, do so much better if you do that over a series. Like in every, think about like um, something almost like a, like Banshee or something like that, right? Like think about Banshee in space. You just throw Lando into that same role. It could be absolutely incredible. And obviously, um, uh, old Gambino, childish Gambino, was like the best part of the entirety of Solo. So you throw him in there as Lando again. Everything, all the parts there should work. Maybe a little bit less 05 in this one, right? That was the robot's name. <laughs> maybe, a 100%, <laughs> maybe 100% less L5 and a lot more Lando and a lot more like sort of criminal enterprise of the week sort of uh, action. I think you, uh, that would be awesome. And I agree with you, Jeff. The less connective tissue specifically with this, like Ahsoka, you have to do that. Uh, Mando didn't mm -hmm. necessarily need that, but I think they've handled it well so far. Um, but like this one, if you just like literally no tissue, no stopping to be like, Oh, this is where he learned to do this move when he drives into the Death Star and Return of the Jedi. Like none of that shit. Just like doing very cool individual little things all across the galaxy, like a full on scumbag. Maybe ending it out with him being in the getting in the Cloud City with something. Like I think I'm gonna like this Cloud City place. That's how I would write it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think we got a good. Yeah, I, I think like I think you're right. I'm sorry, and then you can go good. But I think I think you nailed it. Is that it's I want the I want like the serial of the week, the mission of the week, the tat, like that's the type of show I want with this type of thing. So I kind of wish that's what we got, but obviously yeah. very much not the case. Now, now I'm just imagining like an adult animated series for Lando, which would be, be kind of cool. nuts. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I, I'm on board with this just because anytime you jump from TV to movie, the quality, there's going to be a jump. There's going to be, it's going to be higher quality, uh, probably tighter. Um, I, now that you guys have made this argument, I am kind of hearing what you guys are saying. Like, it would be really nice to have a serialized adventure. That's one of the things I love most about Mando season one is it is so serialized, even though people spoofed it time and times again, time and time again, like the, uh, oh, no, we got to go get milk from this planet. All right. That's what we're doing this episode. Like, I yeah. like that. It's fun. That's how shit used to be. That's how it used to, you know, it's like, it's okay. It there's so many, so many things to watch these days. Sometimes it's nice to not just have to keep up with like ongoing storylines in every single show and universe. Like if you just know the character and what he's like, then it's fun. Um, I trust Donald Glover with this at the end of the day, as long as they give him control on this, he really, has he missed yet on really anything? Uh, I'm trying to think. Not really. Everything he touches is kind of gold. Yeah, no, he's usually it, pretty spot on with his stuff. Yeah. DVD. Yeah. That's fair. Um, but outside of that, yeah, no. Sure. Make it a movie. Um, and then last thing, speaking of movies, let's end it here. Blumhouse is totally killer, aka Happy Death Day Three. Um <laughs> After Jamie's mother, this, this comes out, by the way, this comes out uh, in October. Good, around Halloween. Horror movie around Halloween. Thank you for doing that. After Jamie's mother's friends are murdered by the Sweet 16 killer on Halloween, she travels back in time to 1987, where she pairs up with her mom to stop the young would-be killer and get back to her timeline before she's trapped in the past forever. It does feel like they were trying to make Happy Death Day 3, uh, and they decided to change course. Uh, but this does. It seems fun. Kier uh, Kiernan Shipka going the lead role as Jamie. Uh, Julie Bowen would play will play her mom, and obviously there will be like a younger version. Randall Park. Um, I, every now and then, Blumhouse has some of these hits. He's like smaller horror hits, so I absolutely will give it a chance here. But it does feel like they tried to make Happy Death Day three. Yeah, just a little bit. I, I like Shipka though. There's something about her, and I uh, forget. I think I was talking to you, Gucci, about it. They have a very funny bit with her and um, the other two. Uh, he's uh, she's I think a pretty funny actress. She was in Sabrina, the right the. Um, Right, Netflix. she's like kind of from this like world a little bit where like she seems to fit in well. Yeah, and she was good in that. I, I only saw like the first season of that, but she was good in it. Um, so yeah, why not? I mean, I'm not I'm not one of those. I know obviously was like I'm a noted Happy Death Day hater, but uh, yes. this is Happy Death Day, and I think if you compare the two, you're just a fool and uh, <laughs> you're an idiot that wants to put the stink of a Happy Death Day onto what well, could be a starring new franchise for for Shipka and Co and Bowen and. and uh, Randall Park and all them. So uh, keep on hating from the wrong side of the happy death day picket fence or picket lines. Yeah, no, this, this just does, it does look like a, it's a Blumhouse movie through and through, um, yeah. which it looks like a Blumhouse movie in a good way though. Uh, it looks fun, cheap. I mean, 
this this is what a streaming movie should look like. It's just cheap laughs, nothing too hard to think about. Throw it on with your family, with a date, whatever. I'll, I'll probably have a good time with this one. I ho- hopefully we review it. <laughs> um, outside that, I don't, I don't really know Kiernan Shipka at all. I know she's Sabrina, but I never watched that. Um, I thought it was uh, a grown-up version of – who was that child actress that was in everything for a while? Fuck. McKenna Grace. That's who I thought it was at first. And I, was I mean, like, she is a – I mean, Kiernan Shipka is a child actress. She was in Mad Men. Wow. Yeah, that's right. She was the daughter everyone hated. I forgot about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She wasn't mad, man. I've um, so that's it for news. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you can. Helps us out a lot, and like the video, even if you know maybe you know hit it with a like if you're excited for Aquaman two, and um, then also hit it with a like if you're not excited for Aquaman two, and let us know below uh, what you think about the return of uh, what's the, what's the character's name? Arthur Jason. It's Arthur. Arthur something. No, it's it's. Oh. Uh, it's it's Arthur fish, fish based. Yeah, it's Arthur Curry. <laughs> Arthur it's fish Curry based. I knew it was fish right. based. Um, <laughs> uh, that's it for Ken Jack and Gooch. I'm Jeff D. Lowe. We will talk to you next time.